Yeah, uh, my name is uh, Brent Bavenzi. Um, I would have been at the New York meetup. That is where I live over in Williamsburg, but I have a wedding to attend in Sweden this week. Um, so let's get to it. I guess the first slide is just, well, who am I? That's, um, yeah, my name is Brent. I'm an Airflow committer and I'm a front end developer uh, at Astronomer. And uh, I've been working a lot on trying to make the Airflow UI better. We've been doing lots of like little changes, but the whole talk about this one is like, where are we really going? So first, just let's talk about the past of the Airflow UI before we talk about the future. I think Airflow having a UI was a big advantage of why it became such a popular tool. It's there's so it's like quite a complex, complicated system. We have an entire summit to talk about all the aspects of it. And so having a UI to help you understand what's actually going on is really helpful. But I would say that nowadays the UI, the UI has been showing its age. Um, it is quite um, bloated of the like different features that have been added on. There's quite a few tabs that I honestly don't really know what they do, like the landing times or some other other charts there. Um, you have to require like redirects, like a thousand redirects to do anything or to just see the, the logs of your task takes like, you have to go through many pages to reach that. And now while we've made plenty of incremental changes, if you look at the UI in 1.10 to 2.2, we made tons of changes, but really don't think it's enough. And so that's why we introduced uh, the Airflow Improvement Proposal AIP 38 to build a modern web application. So to decouple the architecture, to split it from a like Flask app builder templates. This is what we have currently that is quite difficult to work with using like modern technologies like React, TypeScript, and the sort. Um, and also just separate it for them for a little bit more from the web server. Use the REST API. If anyone has used that before, uh, it's not super robust yet, but that's something we're working on doing. And I think by building UI around it, we can have a really robust UI and a really robust REST API for any other needs. Um, just attend to the actual design of the entire UI. Um, we can prove the, like our maintainability of the project and community support like by using something like React over Flask App Builder templates is that that is a common technology that many other people know, many other people have experience with and so can easily contribute something. And then finally, the idea with AIP was to uh, reassess our um, IA and UX, just, all right, if we're gonna rebuild everything all over again, what do we want that all to look like? And now we had a few things that got in the way of um, making progress on this. this. is kind of like a big AIP that doesn't just happen in a minor release, but uh, takes some time to get through uh, while we're still trying to push many other big features like dynamic tasks and whatnot. And so um, here in, but in 2.3, we did make a big change. And so I'm gonna try to do a live demo if at all possible. And so um, in 2.3, for dynamic tasks, we decided to switch out the tree view for the grid view. So just kind of like give a demo of that real quick. Here's the example task group that you can find in the example DAGs on Airflow, and so we have like two task groups and we even have, well, we have three task groups and one is nested inside of another one. This is the structure of our DAG. In the tree view, no, it's not working. All right, well, in the tree view is kind of broken that the branches and everything, I have a backup for a reason, there we go. So in the tree view, one issue was that we repeated tasks over and over again. See, so we have task four showing up multiple times. This task two, does that show? No, that one's actually good. But we do get task three showing up a few times. And it's quite confusing to what's the actual status of things going on. Why is end on this part empty? And why is end here green and good? Uh, and so that's something we wanted to address. And there's a few other bugs that came up, quite a few usability bugs that came up with the tree view. And when adding dynamic tasks, we're going to have a big issue of how do we do more things with that? 
And so we came up with the grid view. Here's that exact same DAG to bring first class support for task groups at the beginning. So we can just expand and collapse them all, um, being able to far easily just separate the concerns. Okay, my DAG ran. Maybe if something failed inside of here, then I want to go into and see what actually happened on task four and only have a single task to discover. And uh, what else we added in the grid view this is all in 2.3 is uh, like a details panel. So instead of having to have a click on a modal and like have to find out which run, which DAG you're running, get redirected a ton of times, so we can do that all immediately in place. I'm going to set that as a failure, except something's angry at me. So maybe never mind. This is what I get for doing a live demo. Um, maybe I can queue up a run. Nope. OK, something's not running right now. That's fine. Um, so yeah, that's sort of the plan is that we at least can get those failures really quick without having to get a redirect three times. Um, and this is trying to be the new basis of the, um, this, I guess like, blah. this is the start of the, like, this is how we just wanted to try to get, make a more dynamic UI. This is basically, a React app in built plugged into the um, into the current UI, but then we have a lot more custom control over it. Even since 2.3.0 has come out, we've been able to make lots of changes to, let's say, add filters. So I only want to see my manual DAG runs, or I only want to see ones that have succeeded, or I only want to hover over certain certain states of them, which has been really helpful. Uh, we can also see this with dynamic tasks. So we can see this one mapped here is one of our uh, dynamic tasks and has fired off 128 um, tasks here. That Then we can see that information below and have it all be paginated and sorted without it overwhelming our like grid or tree. So that was a quick live demo of it. We can now go through these slides a little bit um, and so what's next on this sort of, um, we're going to continue with that, like hybrid react flask app builder app. Um, you know, that is the main UI we're doing. Um, we will iterate on the grid view. We'll try to add more things. Any like concerns people have that maybe we've disrupted their workflow somehow would love to add them back in or like love to improve your workflows. Um, that's something that, like, since it's built in React now, we can kind of iterate on it a lot faster and continue to support any new features as we build 2.4, 2.5, and anything into the into the future. And we'll figure out which of those changes might be like big fundamental changes or not. Um, certainly, I understand like tree to grid was a big disruption, but. Um, it was kind of necessary in order to get dynamic tasks to work and set ourselves up to do DAG versioning too. Uh, so maybe a large refactor might require us to like might make sense to build in um, build in React, but uh, we'll try to avoid those disruptive changes. A longer term of the new UI will be to actually deliver on AIP 38. I think in 2.4, we are going to have a beta UI that is pure React um, that you can sideload. We'll get like a little try the new UI beta button. Um, it won't be feature complete for a while. That's still like an, a process we can go through. And we'll be sharing these React components between those UIs. Um, but that will give us a cool area to experiment with an entire new UX and information architecture. Uh, of the UI, and would love to get like everyone's opinions on that um, to make that happen. Uh, some ideas of what we can do with the new UI. Um, I'll bring up some mockups here. Although these are like kind of rough draft ideas. These are some like also old mockups. So none of these are like set in stone. Just wanted to get people maybe a bit excited. Is uh, so turning the grid view also into a way of navigating the app using this details panel we showed before more so we can do like a Gantt chart that lines up exactly with the tasks you have to see how long each task ran and like how parallel everything is running. 
um, and even see how long it was queued versus how long it actually ran for. I think it'd be really helpful. And we can switch between that and seeing maybe a graph at the same time. These are just some ideas I have about ways we can make it easier to zoom in and zoom out of um, the core experiences you need in Airflow. It's like, all right, what is broken? Like, is everything working? If something's not working, what is broken and what caused that? Like that I think is like a core experience we'd really like to improve upon. Um, and yeah, I would just pretty quick talk here. I would say let's um, let's connect. I'd really like to make this a more proactive process. Sometimes I felt as though it has been reactive as we've kind of just like, okay, I need to make the UI better. We need to make the UI better to support a new feature or okay, something's broken. And so we have to fix that. But what is really, how do we really make this a better experience, help everyone do their jobs better? Um, I'd like to be more proactive on that. So please um, fill out the Airflow user survey I for and for AIP 38, I'll be um, fleshing out the project board a lot more, hopefully bringing in a bunch of mockups for people to see what's coming up and what to do, or like um, see what's coming up, comment on it before um, it shows up. Um, and feel free, of course, as always, like open up sort of any sort of GitHub issue and discussions, anything on the UI you'd like to see. I'm happy to like hear to anybody's opinion, hear anyone's thoughts or also just reach out to me on, um, on Twitter, on GitHub, or on the Airflow community Slack. I'm happy to chat with anybody. I know um, some people had, def had like some strong opinions on the Treaty Grid View changes or other UI changes that could be made. I'm really happy to listen to all of those. Uh, so I wanted to keep that pretty quick in order to turn it over to more of a Q&A.